Ranchers have been grazing cattle in California's Owens Valley since the mid-1800s. But the land doesn't belong to them. They lease it from the city of Los Angeles. L.A. bought the entire Owens Valley over 100 years ago. Not for the land, but for the water that flows through it from the Sierra Nevada mountains. That water travels south through a 300-mile-long aqueduct to L.A. For decades, L.A. has left some of it behind for the ranchers who lease water access from the city. But now, it's trying to take it away from some 6,000 acres in Mono County. That includes land leased by Gary Giacomini and his family, who have lived in the Owens Valley for generations and were among the original ranchers to sell their land to L.A. Most of what we lease from the Department of Water and Power in Mono County is irrigated. If you're from Los Angeles, you would know what happens if you take a irrigated lawn and quit irrigating it. It just dies. So how does that affect your operation? If you lose half of your income, half the people got to go. The ranchers used to get water as a part of their leases. Now, L.A. says it needs all of it to adapt to climate change, meaning the ranchers can't depend on any water from year to year. So ranchers like Gary, along with Mono County and environmental groups, are suing the Los Angeles Department of Water and Power. They claim that the city didn't do the necessary environmental impact assessments and that local ranchers should still have access to water. How long have you lived in the Owens Valley? 88 years. That's how old I am. That's how old you are. <laughs> Jack Tatum, a friend of the Jackaminis, fought with the department back in the 70s. My feeling now is uh, that they don't want me here anymore after I paid the damn rent on uh, 12,000 acres for 70-some years. They make up new rules every six months, and we're not getting along worth a damn. If this story sounds familiar, it's probably because you've heard it before. In the 1974 film Chinatown. In the movie, Jack Nicholson plays a 1930s detective who uncovers a sinister plot to steal water from a faraway valley for the benefit of developers in LA. You have any idea what this land would be worth with a steady water supply? About 30 million more than they paid for it. Virtually nothing about the movie Chinatown is historically accurate, but it gets at a deeper truth. The conflict between the Owens Valley and Los Angeles goes back to the beginning of the 20th century. Los Angeles is a desert community, and without water, the dust will rise up and cover us as though we never existed. William Mulholland, the chief engineer of the Los Angeles Department of Water and Power, conceived of a scheme to bring water to the growing city of Los Angeles. How important is the aqueduct to LA? Los Angeles arguably would not exist as we know it without the aqueduct. It made modern Los Angeles possible. So here's the Cascades. Um, there's two Cascades. The Low Cascades was the one that was uh, when William Mullen said, there it is, take it back in uh, 1913 when the aqueduct opened up. So that's water that used to be snow on the mountain. This is we're right. Currently finding. Right, we're going to go see where this water came from. At the root of this conflict is the zero-sum nature of resources on a changing planet. Climate projections show that snowpack will be less reliable in the future, which means there will be less water to go around. And at the end of the day, LADWP's mission is to get water to people in LA. So right now, we're uh, almost to the town of Lone Pine in the southern end of the Owens Valley. We're flying right over the LA aqueduct, where it's an open channel. So the snow we see in the eastern Sierra over there, that is the water that I drink when I when we are on my faucet. That's right. For our snow survey, we have set places that we measure every year so that we're able to, to do that comparison. And then we have those up and down the mountain range. 
The version of this story that says the villain is Los Angeles, which, you know, deviously stole water from this other faraway place. 115? And continues to do so to this day. Is that a fair version of the story? We have done the exact same thing that most all of urban California has done. People have largely brought water to where they live. And so we got the rights to the water and, and took what was ours. At the same time, we're trying to maintain the agricultural basis of the community in the Eastern Sierra. But if we leave water behind for uses here and that water has to be then be replaced in Los Angeles, somebody has to pay for that. There's no silver bullet for this problem. This is one very specific dispute, but these kinds of disputes between different communities and their access to resources in an era of climate change, I, I imagine those kinds of disputes are, are you know, not going the, anywhere. The, yeah, and this is an issue between us and, and six ranchers. But as climate change issues hit, this is to be a microcosm of, of what everyone's gonna face. The days of having extra water just to put everywhere seem to be gone. But it doesn't matter how well the climate crisis is managed. Someone, at some point, will be left without what they need. It's almost like the Department of Water and Power is trying to qualify for Chinatown. 